the last segment, we looked at simple harmonic motion as it applies to the so-called simple pendulum. Uh, I recall the simple pendulum the, uh, was a case where we had just a uh, point mass hanging on the end of a uh, thread, let it uh, rock back and forth. The physical pendulum is different in that we imagine that it could be any strangely shaped object that might be uh, pivoted at the top and allowed to rock back and forth in what will turn out to be also simple harmonic motion. Uh, in the case of the um, simple pendulum, uh, we analyzed the forces, applied F equals MA, and, uh, and found the um, equation for the angular frequency. We'll do nearly the same thing for the physical pendulum. Uh, the big difference is that for the physical pendulum, the uh, uh, object is an uh, extended object which is rotating about some pivot point, and as a consequence, uh, we'll apply the laws applying to rotational motion, which is to say, instead of using F equals MA, we'll be applying torque is equal to I alpha. Uh, the torque in this case is the gravitational torque, and uh, as we've learned, uh, when we have an extended object like this, there exists some point on the object called the center of gravity, uh, where we can assume the entire weight force acts. And uh, that, of course, is, is very convenient for us to pretend that the entire weight is concentrated at that center of gravity. Uh, to calculate the torque, of course, we need to know how far it is from the pivot to uh, the point where the force is applied and your text calls that distance D, uh, again, from the pivot to the point of application of the force. And just as we did for the simple pendulum, we're going to resolve the weight force into two components, uh, one component of which is radial and the other component which is tangential. And just as in the case for the simple pendulum, uh, we find that the angle in this force triangle is angle theta, which is exactly the same angle as the line connecting to the center of gravity makes with the vertical. And so things are fairly straightforward here. We write down the torque that is the mg, and this is the sine of that angle theta times the, uh, times the uh, perpendicular lever arm, uh, in this case uh, call it D, as your text does, and that will equal I alpha, and alpha, the angular acceleration we've already meant, uh, that angular acceleration is of course the second time derivative of the angle theta. And <coughs> once again, just as in the case of the, uh, of the simple uh, pendulum, the, uh, we are going to use a small angle approximation and say that uh, as long as the oscillation angle is small, we can replace the sine of the angle with the angle itself, theta, provided that we put theta in radians. The only thing missing then in our expression is to remember that uh, this needs to be a restoring torque and if we count theta as being positive uh, when the object, uh, when the positive, uh, when the object rotates, say, to the right, then this restoring torque is in the opposite direction, is negative, and so we'll have to insert a minus sign on our torques here in order to get the right, uh, right expression. But once we're there, uh, we can very rapidly proceed. Uh, let's isolate the, uh, the second derivative over here. And we can see that it looks like what m g d, and then we'll divide by i, and then uh, that'll be theta, and we're right back at that very famous equation uh, that we've written previously, uh, and we know that when we have simple harmonic motion, this coefficient 
of the theta term in the differential equation is our angular frequency squared and so we have exactly what we need we have an expression for the angular frequency of our physical pendulum as it goes back and forth in terms of the mass of the, um, of the pendulum acceleration of gravity this distance d again the distance from the pivot to the center of gravity and now we need the moment of inertia of this extended object the moment of inertia when that object rotates about this pivot in fact finding that moment of inertia is oftentimes the more challenging part of the problem um, we have a, um, a table in your textbook that gives us moments of inertia for a large number of objects about their center of mass uh, but these objects typically don't uh, oscillate about their center of mass rather somewhere else and so we'll have to do a little bit of work to calculate that moment of inertia in fact let me let me next do an example uh, for you uh, to show exactly how we would calculate that moment of inertia in a uh, in a specific case washes off of everything but fingers anyhow as I say what we uh, now want to do is a, a particular example of a physical uh, pendulum uh, let me choose this uh, let me hang from a, a thin massless near massless wire a, uh, a rectangle shaped like this um, let's call the uh, dimensions of the rectangle say A and B and uh, let's let this distance uh, the length of this uh, wire that I've used to hang the mass let's call that uh, uh, C for lack of a better expression so again I'm talking a rectangular uh, uniform mass M uh, hang from the thread and we're going to let that wobble back and forth and what we need to do is to find out exactly how to calculate all of the elements in our expression for the angular velocity of that pendulum well remember that this distance d is the distance between the center of gravity of our pendulum and the pivot point uh, for the rectangle it's pretty easy to figure out where the uh, where the center of gravity is and uh, it's equally easy to see how far that center of gravity is from our pivot uh, that looks to me like that must be the distance c uh, plus half of the distance b and so we now know what we would substitute in for the uh, uh, for d uh, next problem is to find out what the moment of inertia of this rectangle is as it rotates about this pivot at the top um, the parallel axis theorem that we studied uh, previously tells us exactly how we should uh, we should calculate that and <clears throat> it says that the uh, the moment of inertia of an object about some other axis is equal to the sum of its moment of inertia about its center of mass plus the mass of the object times some distance squared where that distance d is the distance between the axis that goes through the center of mass and the axis up at the pivot uh, and the uh, text uh, table 9.2 which I hope is becoming one of your favorite tables uh, we are told there that the moment of inertia of a rectangle like this uh, through the center of mass is 1 12th of a squared plus b squared 
times the uh, total mass of the object. And so to calculate the uh, uh, moment of inertia uh, total, then we need simply to add on the uh, mass times d squared, and in this case that distance d, remember it's from the center of gravity, uh, uh, center of mass, uh, to the point of pivot. In this case that distance happens to be also equal to b over 2, uh, c plus d over 2. So this, this moment of inertia i that would go into our formula is just the sum of those two a squared plus b squared times our capital M plus M times this d squared c plus b over 2 quantity squared. So now we have it. Uh, we know how to calculate I. Uh, we know how to calculate D. And putting those two expressions into um, our square root of mgd over i, we'll have the angular velocity of our physical pendulum. And as usual, from there you can find the frequency, uh, the period, uh, amplitudes, energies, and so forth, just as you have been doing for other cases of simple harmonic motion. Um, you'll uh, need these ideas for the uh, homework problems that are due Thursday and continue to be due Thursday. Uh, I hope that I will uh, see you then. If you have any questions, uh, don't hesitate to uh, send them to me by email. In the meantime, uh, stay warm and stay safe.